So, a new Exorcist film is coming out. It's going down the trend of classic horror movies many years later getting a sequel. Because, let's face it, they've been going so well recently. <laughs> Looking at the trailer, let's go through the checklist of movie studio must-haves for major horror franchise films for the modern audience sequel. Is there a legacy character? Check. That character facing off with an old foe? Check. Classic major music pieces to boot the nostalgia in the- Check. Iconic shots and imagery pandering to fans? Check. The demon doing things that reminds us of what the original done but better? Check. Where have we I'm seen sorry. all of this before? I'm afraid your old friend's back. So yeah, if you've come to watch this video for a I can't wait for this movie to come out kind of review, it's not happening. And to add to all of this, they're making a trilogy for it. Because you can't just take up an old IP and make it a laughing stock. You've got to make sure that you really run it into the ground and then it's all over it. Why do I think this? Because it's happened consistently over the past few years. Reboots, reimaginings and late off sequels, they've all been absolute dog And I'm not the only one that thinks this. And the creme de la creme, the icing on the cake, Universal and Blumhouse have only recently finished up a horror trilogy and how well did that go what did you do to him no no no, no. <laughs> right. and yet they're making a new trilogy in the exorcist my expectations are just simply low So, if you've ever watched The Exorcist, I bet you, you can remember where, when, and how you felt after watching it. Give it a second. The first time I saw this film was at a friend's house. I was sat on the floor between the bed and the TV. Him and his girlfriend were laying front down on the bed just over my head watching the film. When the film ended, my mate thought it'd be a great idea to put on the voice and say, Your mother sucks cocks and hell, Terrace. So I'd done what anyone would naturally do and punched him straight in the face, jumped about five foot in the air and out of my skin, and I was terrified of the film and of the jump scare. So I walked home with a dumbbell handle in one hand and as I was walking home, one of the street lights just went out and that walk turned into a run, I can tell you that. So the original Exorcist was just lightning in a bottle, standing as an openly sacrilegious film with the director hoping for religious institutions to denounce the film. The film had thematic undertones, covering war, sexism, religious, faith, and the state of middle America in the 60s and 70s. The Exorcist had forced itself into the attention of the public eye. <laughs> I ain't never took my coke and hooded over my face like that. Uh, I thought it was uh, very powerful. Just turned my mind. <sighs> terrible. But I just found it really horrible. We just had to come out. I couldn't take him. People are extremely depressed. By and with that attention, became regarded by several publications as the greatest horror film ever made, and has recently been inducted into the National Film Registry. How can Believer keep this greatness going? It won't. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the original film. I think that the original Exorcist is amazingly well written, filmed, and just the imagery and the effects in that film define the horror genre and become iconic in their own right, inspiring a plethora of films to try and follow in its stead. Just one quick example, this scene and this shot right here. You'll see this window shot symbolising a protagonist walking into an unknown and dangerous territory of having a religious battle of faith to save an innocent victim, effectively looking up as evil as it has the upper hand while the protagonist is playing the underdog. This is just one example in a film that's bursting with these horror defining scenes and cinematography. Just to name a few, you got the spider crawl. You got the head spin. You've got Reagan crashing the party and saying, I'm gonna die up there. 
You've got the crucifix scene. The less said about that one on YouTube, the better. But my point is, The Exorcist paved the way in ideas for horror films and became an inspiration to hundreds of thousands of filmmakers. Believer bluntly won't do any of this. Looking through the trailer, the imagery looks already full of cheap crap jump scares that are just gonna be there for the creep factor. This body in the blood scene can be compared to the party scene, and I'm going to. Let's just do that. I can only work with what's in a trailer, but the original Exorcist is far more subtle. The scene is quiet, it's tense, it conveys what it needs to quickly. It's short and simple in delivering the message of a supernatural unsettling force helped Reagan hear, understand, predict the future of a conversation that she wasn't a part of with the astronaut. Delivering an eerie straight-faced line of you're going to die up there, and then with that exact same straight face, wedding herself. Being guided away in a caring manner by her mother, who understands that something is wrong. Compare this to what we see in the trailer for Believer. It's loud, it's obnoxious, it's bloody, and it's just bath sort tweaking nonsense screaming to the heavens, the body and the blood. All of these things are just unnecessary. They're over the top for what it needs to really do. And with that, it's basically pressing into the audience's faces, look, something is wrong. As if we'd be too stupid to understand the same moment with a bit more decorum. Yes, we get it, you're possessed now. What else does this scene say? Nothing, as far as we can see in the trailer. It's just a loud, mixed up set piece in a church, an attempt for a cheap scare, and some creepy imagery. With that, I can see Believer continuing to make hollow imitations of source material instead of being bold enough to try and stand as its own unique good possession horror film. So I recorded this before the release of the second Exorcist trailer and they've kind of proved me wrong. They've gone ahead basically given us something that the Exorcist franchise hasn't given out before which is you're gonna have to choose for one of the girls to die. One girl lives, one girl dies. It's a nice twist, it's different, but yeah I wish I would have known this before I started slamming into this. <laughs> I mean I could keep going with this, subtlety is key and it helps build dread. I'm gonna let these two scenes play, one from The Exorcist and one from Believer. They're both about faith, they've both got the same themes. Which is better, in your opinion? Why this girl, it makes no sense. I... I think... the point is to make us despair. To see ourselves as animal and ugly. To reject the possibility that God could love us. God played a trick on you. In The Exorcist, we're shown a man who's losing his faith in God, whereas in Believer, it's straight up blurted out. God doesn't like you. He's played a trick on you. It's just a little bit more nuanced. There's a little bit more care given to it. The scene in The Exorcist is acted and written into the film with such care. Somehow I don't see the same level of conflict and decorum being written into the exposition dump of the legacy character Chris McNeil. Believer is going to be full of these poorly paced throwaway scares that amounts to Jack Quack's back. Exorcism is a ritual. Every culture, every religion, they all use different methods. It's going to take all of them. Don't be scared. We've met with Now that jump scare has been undone, all the tension is gone. Which brings me on to my next comparison is pacing. 
source material for the film was a book of the same name, published in 1971. The pacing develops a sense of dread and unease through the film as Reagan slowly falls deeper into Demon Pazuzu's possession. The scares come later in the film, then they are substantial and genuinely shocking, because the tension and the sense of horror has been building through the film. While this has been happening, you've been given time to know and familiarise yourself with the characters in the film. With this, you then understand what's at stake. The soul of this young girl, who you've now had time to know, her, her family situation, her mother and the priests all concerned for this little girl's well-being. Watching the character's journey as they see this girl go through this horrible ordeal is as interesting as following the possession itself, because we're given time to understand these well-written out three-dimensional characters. The story is paced and written in a way which we understand the plot. We are familiar with the characters and by the end of the movie when shit really hits the fan, we only want what's best for all of them. Then I move on to what's seen in the Believer trailer. Two girls go completely missing from the film for three days while they're being possessed. Who thought that was a good idea? This is time when you build the tension. This is time to show your audience why they should be invested in your characters that are going through this ordeal. This should be the time to see our main characters broken down through the story that's being told. But no, they just went walking in the woods and now they're in hospital and you can see them doing creepy things like banging on glass, showing early movie jump scares that cheapen and kill any sense of tension that would and should be building at the beginning of the film. The girls continue behaving strangely when they get taken care of at home, it all continues, they're both hospitalised, either that or they're mentally sectioned, and then we get the introduction to our legacy character, oh god, and even in the trailer, it's bad. The stakes are presented to her through the demon, referring to her as mother. Mother. All of this implies that Reagan's died somehow off screen, which is very weak. And from trailer two, this just kind of highlights that, really. Are you looking for Reagan? Are you looking for Reagan? <laughs> they then have the legacy character Chris McNeil pull a huge exposition dump. Exorcism is a ritual. Every culture, every religion, they all use different methods. It's going to take all of them. And it's just cheap. It doesn't provide any character development for her, it doesn't provide any stakes for her, and it just very lazily drags the plot along. Not to mention now, as she's gone through this in the past, she is a sage of exorcism instead of an actor whose daughter has been possessed many years ago. This whole ordeal would more than likely bring up trauma of the original incident than whatever this f***ing tribe is. And of course she can do battle with the demon for you, because that's what all these legacy characters do. Ooh. The legacy bat symbol has gone off, I've got to run off and fight Ghostface, fight Michael Myers, fight the fucking exorcist demon Pazuzu, fuck off. All of this is just setting up Chris McNeil, our legacy character, to be a poorly developed nothing burger of a character who's just going to be there. And I think the same could be said for the parents and the possessed children. I know I can only say what I'm getting a taste from the trailer. It's just hard to believe that they'll have time to flesh out two families, Chris McNeil, the priests, the two possessed girls, then they have to fit in all of the creepy jump scare moments that they're putting in all over the place, and then push the story through all of the locations and have it flowing smoothly. Friends heartbeat. They're beating in sync. Then at the end of the trailer, they have more wanting to be creepy lines that are just throwaway nothing babble. And then these black and white photos, there's one where the, one of the girls looks like a carbon copy of Reagan from the first film, ripped straight out of Nightmare from Elm Street effects. Which just goes further to prove my point. Unoriginal, uninspired, unloved sack of a cash grab film. Now as harsh as I have been, I know they can't make a movie as good, as iconic, and as culturally outstanding as the original. They can at least try and make a halfway decent film instead of another possessed horror movie that simply imitates its source material. All of this to just get theatre goers to say, oh my god, nostalgia, they did the thing, they played the music, am I right? Yes, they're already doing it in a trailer. It's a cash grab with the access name slapped on the side of it. And they're making a trilogy which just screams, money please. And that's it. This could have just been another possession horror film in the sea of them. 
But no, they decided to slap the biggest name on the side of it for marketing purposes. Don't believe me? Look at its title. It speaks for itself. The Exorcist is bigger than the Believer part of the bloody title. Because that's its selling point. It is the new Exorcist film. Remember The Exorcist, the scariest film that ever existed? So with this, what I think is going to happen with the trilogy, the first one's going to be pretty good, very similar to Halloween, and then the next two are going to be abysmal. But the first one will earn enough money to justify the trilogy. That's what I think is going to happen. With this, Believer will just go on to be forgotten, just like all the other Exorcist sequels, and will be dwarfed in the shadow of the Colossus that is the Exorcist. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe and all of that fun stuff. It's appreciated. Cheers.